Okay, so today we're focusing on uh, producing your brief in InDesign. So uh, we've written our brief. Uh, let's just imagine that we've written it in a Word document. Um, and now it's time to present it as neatly as possible. Now, as you're probably aware, the goal with the brief isn't specifically to allude to a certain style uh, or indicate that you've already made any specific design decisions around where you're going yet. So you want to keep it nice and generic, but it does also need to be really neatly presented. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, I've got my little InDesign file here. Um, I've got my Word doc, which has um, my brief in it, um, which is, as you're probably aware, precisely 601 words. I've gone over the limit by one. Um, and roughly the sort of word count that you would expect for each thing. It's going to be different depending on um, your specific brief, but hopefully this is close enough so that you can make some draw some parallels. So we've got that there. We've going into InDesign. I'm clicking New File. Now in here, I'm going to click Web. I'm going to click A3. Now you get to choose whether you're doing your brief in portrait or landscape. I'm going to do mine in portrait for the purpose of the exercise, but it's pretty much the same scenario if you're doing it in landscape. You'll be following the same rules. So I'm going portrait. I'm changing this picas to millimeters. Um, many, many years in the industry, I still don't really know what a pica is, so just change it to millimeters. Um, you just want one page, of course. Uh, remove facing pages, uh, it sort of gets annoying. Not that it matters if there's only one page. We're going to choose six columns. Really, you could probably just choose two columns because you're not gonna divide it into six, but I kind of like to have six uh, just in case one column ends up needing to be say two thirds and one third distribution. Probably not gonna happen, but just go with six. The column gutter, because this is a large format document, your column gutter is probably wanting to safely sit at about 12. Your margins, again, um, it's a very big piece of paper. So it's A3 in size with lots of small text on it. So you're probably gonna want nice, big, wide margins to give yourself heaps and heaps of breathing space around the document. So six columns, 12 millimeter gutters, 20 millimeter margins. Don't worry about bleed and slug. Um, let's just click create. All right, so as you can see, we've uh, got ourselves our document here. Um, hmm, does that look like, uh, yeah, that looks like A3. Um, yeah, you've got yourself your, your columns, uh, you've got yourself your nice big margins. Quite frankly, I think those margins are even probably a bit small. So I've just gone into layout margins and columns and I'm gonna change them to maybe 30 millimeters. That sort of gives myself just that little bit more breathing space. So that's your layout so far. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is on the left hand side, you wanna set up your text. So I'm gonna make a text box. So I've clicked on my little T and I've made my little text box. This one's just gonna be called brief. Now you're gonna to wanna to make that probably 72 point. This is your display typeface. This is as big as it gets. It's your main title. 72 points are a pretty good size for that. You're gonna to wanna to move back and forward and do some rejigging and um, specialize it to your particular style, but I'm gonna go with 72 point. I'm gonna go nice and generic for now. I'm just gonna go an Arial, Arial Black. Uh, so nice, big, bold, solid display typeface. Um, so that's your brief, and let's just slot that in right away. Ka-chunk, just snapping that in there. Um, you could probably, just with your little mouse, just sort of shuffle that across a bit so that that little white area is sort of perfectly in line. Um, clicking on my little text box again. Uh, now I'm going to set an example subheading. So this is your client, audience, purpose, presentation format. So I'm just gonna call it client for now. And I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna go with 18 point. Arial black again. Um, hmm. I'll bump that up to 20 point. Let's see how that looks. You don't want it too big, otherwise your, um, your two column things for say like constraints and expectations might uh, go over three lines, which is starting to look a bit silly. 
Now comes a bit more of some fancy use of typography here. Um, for the purpose of the exercise, I'm going to go click Type and Fill with Placeholder Text. I know that's off the screen a little bit for you, but hopefully you can just remember Type from that top window, Fill with Placeholder Text. All right, so that gets us some lorem ipsum, which basically just allows us to see what that body copy looks like as a whole. So um, that all looks pretty heavy. So the first thing we're going to do is you don't actually want this double space for paragraphs. Uh, what a lot of professional print companies do, or what the standard for print companies do, is you delete that double space. You'll select that all. You're going to click on paragraph over here. And this is your space before. You're going to want to bump that up to, say, maybe five um, millimeters. I'm just going to delete that there. So that way, that space in between, it's not a full space. It's kind of a 75% space. It just makes your text just that little bit more refined. Now I'm going to go into my character over here. I'm going to drop that down to 11 point. Um, newspapers generally sit at about 10, 12 points, uh, your average kind of college paper. You don't want to go too much over that. Remember that the assessor or your teachers is going to be reading this uh, as though they're reading a book. So they're going to be quite close up to the text. Anything bigger than 12, and they're kind of having to move their head to read um, from um, one side to the other, and it kind of is a bit heavy on the eyes. So go with maybe something 11 or 12. And I'm going to jump my spacing up to 19. So if we zoom in there a little bit, you can see that that's got just a nice amount of circulation around the type. So it's kind of nice and comfortable and easy to read. Um, if you sort of drop that back down to, say, 11, can you see how kind of squashed up it looks now? So make that 19. Just give yourself some space to breathe. And we might just change that to Arial, uh, Arial Hebrew. There we go. Let's just go Arial Regular. So something like that. Nice, light, simple, abstract body copy typeface that's going to be nice and easy to read and not really allude to specific stylings. All right, so that's our body copy here. Now it's time to create some text boxes. I'm going to create a big one. This is for the client and audience. And I'm going to create two little ones. Each column represents the presentation need. All right, so now we just need to Alt-Tab, click over to our Word document here. I'm going to copy that, paste that in there. I'm going to grab my communication need one, copy that, paste that into there. I'm going to grab my communication need two, copy that, and paste that into there. Now what we need to do is we're going to eyedropper our little templated things. Um, so basically clicking on your little client there, click on your eyedropper tool, make sure it's this eyedropper tool, not this one. Eyedropper tool, and you're going to click there. Um, yeah, that's all sort of upper and lowercase. I generally probably lean towards all uppercase to be honest, but that's kind of up to you. And see what I'm doing is I've clicked on it. Now I'm just painting each, um, each typeface there. Uh, so you can just see that I'm clicking and dragging to highlight it. And as I highlight it, it converts it to the, the uh, eyedropper that I just dropped, let's say. Uh, so clicking on there. That's all looking pretty good. Uh, audience there. Okay, so now I'm going to click on my eyedropper again, and I'm going to click on my body copy, and it's the same deal again. You're just going to click. So you can see there, um, it's doubling up those spaces because those I haven't removed those spaces yet. So that's something that we're going to need to address. Um, so we'll click on there, keep going through, clicking through, yada, yada, yada. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to just click backspace. So see how this is a double space here? I'm clicking back and then I'm holding shift enter. So that just says ignore that space after rule that you set. I'm going to delete that space there. I'm going to delete that space there. I'm going to uh, 
shift and enter there. Gonna delete this, shift and enter. Just cause that gap's a little bit too much. It's a little bit awkward. So shift and enter. You kinda want it to be tucked in nice and tight close to the, uh, close to the title. So backspace, shift and enter. Just gonna backspace to get rid of that. Um, backspace, shift and enter. And there you go, that's starting to come out okay. So just clicking on that. So you can see we've kind of overspaced it a little bit. This hasn't been adjusted, the typeface there. So I'm gonna select that, just eyedropper tool that again. And eyedropper tool this one, eyedropper tool that one. Oops, make sure you get all of it. Eyedropper tool that one. So that's starting to fall off the page, but we've got heaps of room here. So this is where you just do a bit of a shuffle. We just sort of move that up. We're gonna select both of these. We're gonna move those up as well. I'm going to double click on this and that's gonna just automatically extend it to the limit. There we go. Double click on that, double click on that. Now I'm going to just backspace, shift and enter again. Backspace, shift and enter. And now that's pretty much taking up exactly the perfect amount of space. Uh, ooh, just that one there, again, backspace, shift and enter. And that's uh, starting to look pretty good. A um, Couple of little things, we've got these hyphenations here. You really wanna avoid hyphenations if possible. So I'm gonna select all, click on my paragraph here and uncheck the hyphenate box. Um, you generally wanna avoid hyphenations as much as possible. Um, you can set certain rules around hyphenations to say only hyphenate if you're really desperate, like if it's an extremely long word, but otherwise you want to kind of have it turned off because hyphenations can kind of make it jarring to read. Uh, so that's effectively it. Oh, I'm just going to, I'll close that one off there. All right. Um, now, if you want to see how that looks overall, um, what we can do, oh, hang on, there's just another one there. What we can do is you can hit the W button and that basically removes all of those guidelines. So you can kind of see now that it's um, looking pretty nice. You might choose to, yeah, maybe shrinking that back down to maybe 18 was kind of enough. I'm gonna click on that little eyedropper and then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these all to be smaller, like so. Yeah, I think the 18 looks just that little bit nicer, a little bit more legible um, and a little bit just lighter. You don't want your uh, brief to be too heavy on the eyes. So yeah, something like that. So that's effectively it. That gets you your, your brief. You can choose to, if you want, with your paragraph, you can choose to do it justified. Ooh, no, that looks terrible. Ooh, hang on, there we go. Got to, uh, Hit the enter button there to straighten that up. So that looks that looks kind of okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of up to you. Um, the problem with these columns is that uh, you get these kind of weird shapes happening. If you've got a really big body copy, those shapes become really pronounced and you get what are called rivers, these white things that run through the columns. Uh, so you'll want to avoid that at all, at all costs. Uh, so let's uh, hit the W button again. So we can see that we've got a bit of space. We just want to line that bottom bit up with that bottom margin. We want to grab this, just using the arrow keys to kind of shuffle that down a bit. I'm gonna grab that, give myself a bit of room here. Now you can add a little bit of personalization here. Uh, so you might want to maybe uh, just add some lines to kind of help divide up. Just you, I've drawn a little line here. I'm gonna grab my little stroke tool. Oops, get that out of the way. Little stroke tool here, make that a nice thick and maybe just sort of make it some Japanese dots or something. Um, again, you don't want that to be too heavy on the eyes. You want it to just be nice and light. Um, so even that's probably, um, yeah, I'd probably even go with that. I'm gonna drop that one down maybe to two point, two point there. And that's effectively it, that's your brief done. Now you can add a little bit of personalization, like you may want to say perhaps uh, 
add like a big sort of block of color here. Um, obviously you can't read brief now. You're gonna right click on that block of color. You're going to click arrange, send to back. And you might wanna make that say a, you know, like a mauve color, um, you know, that perhaps kind of alludes a little bit to your project, but not necessarily saying that, uh, yeah, you've decided on a color scheme. That mode looks terrible. I'm going to pick a like a sort of an ochre or something. Brown, mm, that looks worse again. Hang on. There we go. We've got like a sort of a weird green sort of look going now. So uh, yeah, so that's effectively it. Um, if we zoom out a bit, you know, you may want to kind of balance that out with a little block of color at the bottom. But again, you don't want to go too much further than this. This is nice, it's generic, it's easy to read. Uh, if you zoom in, that's about the size that your uh, teacher will be reading it at. I'm gonna get rid of those things. Yeah, it's nice and easy to read. It's got nice paragraph spacing. It's neat, it's light, it's not too heavy on the eyes. Um, and it fits that 600 quite well and it's got lots of breathing space around it. Uh, you can also add an area where the teacher can sign. So whether that's kind of up the top here, I'm just going to eyedropper tool and maybe turn that into kind of like a lighter watermark or something um, where I can just add the um, teacher signature and date space perhaps um, if you wanted to um, just sort of make that white maybe. Oops, come on, click there, maybe make that white. And there you go, you could add that there, you could add that to the bottom, but from now, hopefully you're kind of getting that idea that you're just sort of shuffling, moving some pieces around. Um, but yeah, just keep that, dot, uh, that um, type font size nice and small for the body copy. Um, try to stick with three different font sizes. So you've got your main display, you've got your subheadings, and then you've got your body copy. You don't want font sizes or type sizes everywhere. You don't want heaps and heaps of different ones. You just want it nice and consistent. Um, give yourself heaps of space around. Um, that's effectively it. Once that's ready, you can of course go file print and you can send that to the printer or you can export it as a PDF if you're wanting to send your teacher a digital copy. It's entirely up to you. Uh, hopefully that gives you a nice little run through. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Happy uh, brief publishing.